So we're going to start here with another theorem. This says that if a series converges, its nth term has to go to zero. Okay. And that leads us to the nth term test for divergence. So keep in mind, the nth term test tells us nothing about whether or not a series converges, but it can tell us if a series diverges. And it says that a series diverges if the limit of a sub n either fails to exist or if it's different from zero. If that limit is zero, the test is inconclusive. We don't know anything either way. Okay. So this can be useful for divergence, but it is not a conclusive test for convergence. And the first example says use the nth term test for divergence to show that this series is divergent or to state that the test is inconclusive. So if I look at the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n plus 4, well, as n goes to infinity, we're going to have 1 over infinity. This is going to go to 0. That actually doesn't tell us anything. Um, the test here is inconclusive. And in fact, inconclusive, let me write this first. In fact, this series will diverge. We're just not able to show that with the nth term test. But I promise there will be other times that we will use this test and it's going to come in very handy. Now, the next two examples say find a formula for the nth partial sum of the series and use it to determine if the series converges or diverges. If a series converges, find its sum. So <clears throat> for a series, we're looking at the sum of a sequence. So the nth partial sum, that's when we're adding together the first n terms of that sequence. In the case of the first one, we're looking at the series uh, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 from n equals 1 to infinity. Now, if I were to write out the nth partial sum, it would look something like this. S sub n. So it would be equal to, um, we'll start with n equals 1. 1 minus 1 half plus... Now we move to n equals 2, 1 half minus 1 third, then n equals 3, 1 third minus 1 fourth, and we would continue all the way to n, so that would be 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Now in this case, hopefully you can see that the Second term here is going to cancel with the first term here. So negative one half, positive one half will cancel. Negative one third, positive one third are going to cancel, and so on and so on. So all we're left with is one minus one over n plus one. That's the nth partial sum. To find the limit of the series, or to find the sum of the series, rather, I'm going to take the limit of that nth partial sum as n goes to infinity. Well, the 1 is unaffected. There's no n value there. But here, when we look at 1 over n plus 1, as n goes to infinity, this fraction goes to 0. So the limit here is 1. So this series converges to 1.
So I do want to make a quick distinction. When we look at the nth term test, we're looking at an individual term. We're looking at basically uh, a term of the underlying sequence. Here we're looking at the partial sum where we're adding together n terms of that sequence. So I do want to make that distinction. I'm going to do one more here in this video. This one says find the sum of the series. This is the series um, from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 4n minus 3 times 4n plus 1. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to go through the whole process here in the video, but in my written notes, I've gone through how to find the nth partial sum. And if you start looking at the first couple partial sums, and I'll, I'll write those out real quick. Um, the first partial sum, when we're just looking at n is 1, you would get 4 fifths. The second one would be 4 fifths plus 4 over 45. If you add those together and then reduce, you end up with 8, eight ninths. Third one would be 4 fifths plus 4 over 45 plus 4 over 117. If you get a common denominator, add those together and reduce, you get 12 over 13. Now hopefully you can start to see a pattern emerging here. Um, the numerator is four times the index number, and the denominator is just one plus the numerator. You can, by induction, show that the nth partial sum is 4n over 4n plus 1. And I have that in my written notes, and you're welcome to, to read through that. It's just using some algebra, so there's nothing too complicated with it. With my nth partial sum just being 4n over 4n plus 1, I can find the limit of that to find the sum of the series. So as n goes to infinity, we get the limit here of 4n over 4n plus 1. I'm going to divide through um, all these terms, divide them through by n. So that's going to give me the limit as n goes to infinity of 4 over 4 plus 1 over n. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. So my limit is just 4 over 4 or 1. So here, just like with the previous example, this series will converge to 1. And not all series are going to sum to 1. Um, it's just how it happened to be for these two examples here.